Welcome to another episode of Stories of Awakening podcast. Today I have with me Julia McCarthy. She was a mentor of mine for a few months last year and she helped me reconnect with my higher self and uh, really, really supported me in a challenging time of my life. Uh, so I'm very excited to have her here with us and she will share her story and what she do now for a living. So hi, Julia, welcome. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here, Valentina. I My name is Julia McCarthy, and I am a psychic intuitive as well as a psychic medicine facilitator. And I'm really psychedelic medicine facilitator. Sorry, <laughs> I'm still waking up. Psychedelic medicine facilitator. And I am excited to share about my story. And, and hopefully it serves as a form of inspiration for anyone out there who's listening, who's going through either a challenging time or is just beginning their own spiritual, intuitive, purpose-led path. <laughs> so excited to share and connect with you all today. Great. Thanks, Julia. So start whenever you feel is the perfect timing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I never know where to start with yeah. this story, but just to give a little bit of background about myself. So I uh, originally started working in the hospitality industry after I graduated from college back in 2013. And I spent a decade working in hospitality, working in hotel management. I loved hotels. And that was really my first way in which I was being called to be in service to the world was through the service industry. And Towards the end of my hospitality career, I got very, very burnt out. I mean, really towards the middle <laughs> and then the end, I got very, very burnt out. And I just had a feeling and knowing that checking people in and out of hotels and cleaning hotel rooms was not what I was meant to do for the rest of my life. And that I had a much bigger purpose out there to really pursue and follow. So after my first psychedelic experience in 2019 with ayahuasca, I decided to quit my job. I left behind my entire decade-long career. I sold everything that I owned. I was living in Denver, Colorado at the time in this really cute, lovely, cozy apartment that was just so perfect for me. Moved out of my apartment. Uh, my fiance, he was also going through a similar situation. So he sold everything that he owned. And then we bought one-way tickets to Bali uh, at the end of 2019 and planned to spend all of 2020 abroad. So in 2020, beginning January 2020, we flew to Bali. We spent three months in Malaysia and Thailand. And during that time, I had a really, it was really the start of my spiritual awakening. Uh, in terms of really unearthing and recognizing mediumship and intuitive gifts that I had. And I had a couple of just really profound and beautiful experiences of loved ones of people that I had known uh, that have passed come through and ask me to pass along messages to them. And then I ended up doing that, which I wouldn't recommend cold calling people in their DMs with messages from their dad or, you know, grandfather or whoever who has passed. <laughs> like <laughs> now that I know what that is, like I would never do that to someone, but I was just beginning out. I was like so excited to just share messages that had come through. So that really began my journey in terms of using my psychic and intuitive gifts. And over 2020, it was a really long journey, had a lot of ego meltdowns about all of it and, and putting myself out there as a life coach and as a psychic medium and all of that. And by the uh, by 2021, I was really full blown into it. And then I got really into, as you know, working with people's higher selves and doing higher self readings and teaching people how to channel their higher selves, which was really rewarding and fulfilling and, and powerful work. And during that time, I really began to deepen my study with psychedelics, mainly with psilocybin, working with mushrooms, and I began to use them for my own healing to work through traumas and, and things that had happened in my past. And it was 
I mean, working with psychedelics in general has just been absolutely life-changing and the biggest catalyst for me in terms of my own spiritual growth. So I was working with them a lot, you know, going on my own journeys and doing my own ceremonies. And in 2021, I really just had such a strong feeling and calling that I was going to work with psychedelic medicine at some point in the future. And it, uh, for anyone out there who is also feeling the call to work with psychedelic medicine and you're like on the edge of, <laughs> of doing that, you're probably going to go through some form of initiation from the universe during that time in terms of being able to really walk the walk and, you know, walk, you know, not just be able to talk the talk, like you have to be able to walk the walk. So in 2022, I experienced a very, very challenging year in terms of relationship upheaval, friendship upheaval, health issues, moving homes, um, found myself in a spiral of anxiety and depression, was going through a lot with my business and work. I was feeling pretty disconnected from the higher self channeling and readings and all that. And I was feeling kind of burnt out from it all. And so it just sent me into this really, really dark chapter in my life where I didn't know what the heck was happening. <laughs> like I had so many moving pieces in my life. There was so much upheaval and it was a really, really dark time, like very, very depressive time. And I ended up pulling myself out of that dark period through a couple of things, one of which was working with psychedelics and, and microdosing and uh, also doing full-blown ceremonies and also very much deepening my relationship to the nature around me here in Oregon. And so I don't know if I'm out of that initiation yet. <laughs> I feel like it's still going. Um, but since 2022, uh, the September of 2022 is when I really started facilitating psychedelic journeys and ceremonies for people. And since then, I have worked with dozens of clients. I've had the deep honor and pleasure of guiding people through these oftentimes life-changing experiences. And I'm mm -hmm. often meeting people at absolute rock bottom moments in their lives when they've tried everything and they're dealing with depression, anxiety, PTSD, trauma, addiction, limiting beliefs, you know, divorce, breakups, just going through really, really challenging and pivotal times in their lives. And it's such an honor to be able to hold space for them as they work with the medicine to heal their lives and essentially turn into their own healers as well. So that is pretty much my full-time job now, <laughs> which is really incredible. And I'm very lucky to be a part of a network called Psychedelic Passage that is based here in the United States. And that has just really opened my world up. And I get to work with people that I would have never have met <laughs> without that opportunity. And it's just incredibly rewarding and fulfilling to, like I said, just watch people transform literally in front of my eyes and, and to see them going from feeling so much despair and hopelessness to finding the will to live again and finding joy and peace and reconnecting with themselves and their truth often for the first time ever in their lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's deep, deep work. Oftentimes my clients will be like, I can't believe you do this for work. <laughs> People will be like, I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, I honestly couldn't do anything else at this point because mm -hmm. surface level conversations just drive me nuts. And <laughs> I prefer to go really deep with people and like, let's dive into, oops, sorry, that was loud. Let's dive into your shadows and, and see what's there and transmute it and turn it into strength. So that's a little bit about, it's like the 30,000 foot view <laughs> well, that's, over the yeah. past couple of years. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, I took some notes, so I remember what I wanted to ask you. It's interesting Wonderful. what you said about <laughs> service, actually, because I worked in finance, as you might probably know. I told you probably. And um, my team, and I've always been in the same team, even when I changed companies, uh, it was called uh, in different ways, depending on the companies, but it was service. So it was helping other people doing their job so I was basically removing their problems whatever they didn't want to take care of my team was taking care of uh, that for them so you mm -hmm. made me think yeah probably I was in service already even if I was in finance <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I wanted to ask you, so how did you know about ayahuasca, which I'm sure many people that are listening to this, they don't know even what that is. Um, but um, how did you know that existed? So were you already in the spiritual community? No, not at all. I had never heard of it before. Um, my now fiance, he had been part of uh, a spiritual community there in Denver for years. And when I first met him, he was talking about, yeah, I'm going to this ayahuasca ceremony this weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that? I've never heard of that. And then he would come back and be like a totally different person. And I'm like, what is going on here? So it was really through my fiance and he's had such, played such a big role in my awakening altogether. Mm -hmm. And just, he's also been such a huge teacher for me in terms of working with medicine. And I don't work with ayahuasca now. I work with mainly with psilocybin, working with mushrooms, but ayahuasca was my first foray into psychedelics and it definitely has the power to change your life if you're willing mm -hmm. to have your life changed <laughs> and to put in the work to make that all happen so it was through him and I'm just very so lucky and grateful to have a partner who had been doing his own work for years prior to us meeting and continues to do his own work and is such a, a wonderful example of someone who's doing psychedelic work in a way that's placing integrity and the what's in the best interest of clients above anything else. Yeah. What I know about the people around me, they're not in the spiritual community. When I even mention psychedelics, there is really terror in their eyes because I yeah. think they are just um, associated with drugs and mm -hmm. that's illegal and that's bad i'm not suggesting that everyone has to do it of course mm -hmm. you need to feel called to it but mm -hmm. it's a completely is a completely different thing um totally. would you would you mind sharing uh maybe what changed for you uh since your first ayahuasca ceremony yeah i would say the biggest things that have really shifted for me and this is in no particular order is first is really coming into deeper connection with my body and trusting my body's intuition and signals and my body's yeses and nos over anything else. <laughs> and especially over the past couple of years, like there's been a lot going on with people's bodies and people being told what they should and should not do with their bodies. And having that connection and that really just clear line of communication between my body and I, and not just blindly putting things into it or not putting things into it, just based on what people tell me has been such a huge game changer for me. Cause I just, I trust my body's intuition and wisdom over what anyone else is saying. And I think of course it's important to take in, you know, views and, and opinions, but really coming back to your own intuition and, and placing your intuition on a pedestal over what anyone believes is best for you mm -hmm. has been such a big shift for me as well as the, just the, the notion that I'm here to live life on my terms and I'm not here to live out anyone else's expectations for me. And I have to follow my own truth and, and oftentimes following a path that's following your truth. It's, it's a challenging path and there's, there's no roadmap. We get things a one step at a time compared to the typical path of, okay, you get married at this age, you have kids at this mm -hmm. age you stay in your career. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It definitely works for some people and that's their purpose in life. But that, that very linear path is, is not for me. And so just really finding the, the bravery to follow my own path when it's hard <laughs> and there's no, there's no playbook for this and, and society typically doesn't support it. And my parents probably think I'm nuts <laughs> and my entire family thinks I'm nuts. And like, no one really knows what I do for work and no one cares to ask. Cause it's, you know, too much for them to hold or I, whatever it is. So just really being able to accept that this is my path and this is what I have chosen and that there's really no going back <laughs> to it mm -hmm. um, has also been, there's really no going back to the, the linear path of, you know, mm -hmm. marriage kids saying the same career has really been such a huge outcome. And also this has come up in conversation recently, just in terms of 
not judging people Mm -hmm. as much and realizing that I'm no better than anyone else on this earth. And whether I, you know, agree with their opinions and viewpoints or not, doesn't make me a better person than Mm -hmm. them. You know, not putting myself on any sort of pedestal and in any conversation or scenario and, and just remembering that everyone's here to live out their own karma and live out the journey that their soul chose for them. And we're all trying the best, trying to do the best that we can. And we all have our own beliefs and faiths and values. And it's not my job to dictate whose beliefs are are better or more moral mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or this or that. So yeah. really just um, giving people a chance and, and viewing someone for who they are and really taking a chance to get to know people. Like I said, whether or not I agree with their views and beliefs, but seeing myself in them and, and trying to love them regardless has mm-hmm. been a really big teacher and lesson <laughs> on this path. Yeah, I totally resonate with what you're saying. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying to do the same, uh, really, especially when, yeah, when you go through a lot, I think it's easier to be compassionate uh, to other mm-hmm. people because, you mm-hmm. know, what probably you, you're going, you went through similar things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's when your life is, yeah completely linear as you said Uh, that's easy then to judge when people take paths like ours that are Mm -hmm. out of the norm Mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you if you feel like sharing of course um one of I always say it but uh one of my biggest uh fears where was um telling my parents and my closest friends um, this change that I was having. So I didn't awaken through psychedelics. It was through meditation, Reiki, and subconscious rewiring, or probably mm-hmm. all together. Um, mm-hmm. um, but when I started to share in these things, the, and also when I said that I quit my job to do this full time, um, it wasn't taken uh, very well. Uh, mm-hmm. not not me- much from my friends um that maybe didn't understand what I was doing um but they admired the fact that you know I wanted to do something and I did it uh but yeah family members I would say um mm-hmm. so how was that for you <laughs> that's a great question um it's been an interesting journey for me and my family in terms of my family hasn't uh, expressed any disapproval for my path, but they also haven't expressed much support or approval either. So okay. I've been doing this since I, March of 2019 is when I started out and got and went out to get my life coaching certification. That was a six months course. So I've been doing this for four years now. And my family's never asked me about what I'm doing for work, you know, has asked like and I've I've shared occasionally when they like ask you know how are you guys making money (laughs) out Mm -hmm. there like the only way and we both say uh, my fiance and I like we have our own businesses like and it's never gone any deeper than that Mm -hmm. and so I've had to reconcile and I've gotten to this place where I love my family unconditionally. Like there's, that's, that's Mm -hmm. never been a question and it's okay if they don't want to talk about it. Like it's, I'm not going to let it affect our relationship anymore. And I went through a lot of grief around that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that I'm still actively working through right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But it just always coming back to if I'm seeking approval from them. And why am I seeking approval from an outside source instead of approving myself and and my own approval of my life being enough? And I think that's something that we all struggle with, especially, you know, millennials with growing up with, you know, parents of the the boomers and and whatnot, um, and just really ceasing to seek that outside approval and knowing that it's maybe it'll come at at some point and I Mm -hmm. still have a great relationship with everyone in my family like it hasn't uh, caused any friction or anything like that 
but I've really had to meet myself and and seek approval from within and and know that this is my truth. I'm following it. And some people won't understand and they're going to be able to only support to at, at certain levels. And, and that's okay. Thankfully I have support from other people that aren't mm-hmm. family members. Um, but I know it can be really hard for people and it can bring up a lot, <laughs> whether you get straight up outright disapproval. That's very, very challenging. I did face a little bit of that when I first started from uh, one family member and you just got to keep going. You can't let it stop mm-hmm. you. Like it's, it's part of it. It's, it's an initiation. It's, it's part yeah. of the path. Honestly, it's weird if it doesn't happen <laughs> in yeah. some way. So it's, it's also a sign you're doing the right thing and, and really following the the beat of your truth and, and the beat yeah. of your own heart. So I think it's a good thing. Yeah. You're breaking the patterns that have mm-hmm. been going on in your probably mm-hmm. lineage for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think this is what, uh, stop many people of doing what they actually want uh, mm-hmm. even when they awaken I think when you awaken is so strong this drive that you will do it probably anyway but I feel there is a lot of resistance usually when it comes to family and I'm talking about my culture in Italy here family is mm-hmm. basically everything um, right so uh, it's very hard to go against them uh, especially because probably you live next door uh you know right. uh, and uh they yeah they they are very very close so yeah this is what i've been experiencing now things are better but yeah i mm-hmm. have to say that was the hardest one of the hardest things that i have to overcome uh not having the approval from my parents and seeing them so worried uh that right. i was doing something you know that i was basically crazy and I didn't want to disappoint them but yeah you you have to do what you're feel called to uh, and yeah. I think that's that's what more and more people um will experience I think going forward mm-hmm. and that's also mm-hmm. why I really want to share these things on this podcast so <laughs> people yeah. that can listen they know Mm-hmm. Uh, what mm-hmm. what to expect and also that mm-hmm. even if your family or your friends uh, don't approve you will find people along the way they will support you in ways that you cannot even imagine and they yeah. are completely aligned with who you are mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah there's your blood family and then there's your soul family <laughs> exactly <laughs> two very very different things and <laughs> it's it's yeah. important to not let your parents or your family's projections of their fears mm-hmm. and speak it to your life and and your purpose and it's it's always going to be there but you just like we said you can't let it stop you you're gonna have to keep going because your your mission is much bigger than the fears that your parents or anyone around you is projecting onto you exactly and i feel if it is for your highest good is for the highest good of everyone else and mm-hmm. uh, your family included even if they don't realize it <laughs> definitely yep a yeah. lot of ancestral healing as you know <laughs> yeah exactly exactly mm-hmm. um so i wanted to ask you since you mentioned and some people that listen they might not believe even in it but what do you mean about um with the word intuition mm. uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say our intuition is really our connection to the divine. And it's how we receive information from our higher selves, from God, source, spirit, universe. And our intuition is, to me, it's like our internal GPS. And the voice of our intuition is always trying to lead us and direct us and guide us to situations, people's, uh, people, events, you know, uh, foods, homes, a- anything at all that's really going to lead us to the path of our highest good. And sometimes when we follow our intuition, it leads us into kind of shitty situations. <laughs> We're like... <laughs> well, this isn't exciting or good. Um, but I think your intuition is, like I said, it's really your your connection to the divine. And it's the voice that sees what's going on in your life from really the, the highest point of view. And it's trying to always lead you and guide you to where you need to go compared to your, your ego, which there's, you know, nothing wrong with your ego, but 
we can definitely get into a place where we're trying to force things when we're, you know, in, in our ego and our intuition is never trying to force. It's just trying to show us and, and guide us. And we always have the choice as to whether or not to listen to and follow our intuition. And I still get tripped up about it where I do things that are the complete opposite of what my intuition told me to do. I'm like, damn it. Why did I ignore <laughs> that? Like I, I teach how to do this for a living. And here I am just ignoring my intuition when it's telling me to do things. Cause I, my human mind thinks that I know what's better or, or what's best for myself. So to me, your intuition is, is your connection to the divine and the connection to your highest self and the voice of your, your inner truth and, and where you really should be going on your path and and to, like I said directing you and guiding you to all the people that you need to see meet hear know and experience in your life yeah and we we'll all have it because I'm mm -hmm. sure some people believe they don't have any intuition mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I usually um associated with the heart when we say mm -hmm. all of your heart Uh, mm -hmm. I think you were teaching me this too, you know, uh, mm -hmm. during the meditation to connect to our higher self was really mm -hmm. focusing on our hearts, mm -hmm. uh, while right. our ego is more the mind, the logic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think I really feel the is very important for everyone to start learning how to reconnect with their intuition, which I also call higher self. Would you call them? as a different thing or to me is it's all the same yeah <laughs> yeah it's all the same <laughs> it's all yeah, coming from the same, the same <laughs> energy coming from the same place of information so some people just resonate more with higher self some people resonate more with god some people with res uh universe some with divine some with god spirit guides but to me it's all the same information coming from the same place mm -hmm. yeah Okay, I wanted to ask you um, one more thing about since you are working with psychedelics and if there is any information that people that are interested to try or want to know more can can have from you or and if you think is the future of mental health because I personally think so. Um, so yeah, if you want to share a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, I think it is definitely the future of mental health. And it's also the past of mental health as well, just mm -hmm. acknowledging that indigenous cultures have been using this medicine for 1000s of years prior to white people being like, Oh, this could actually help with anxiety and depression. Like, they've been using it for 1000s of years prior to us to heal and to come together as a community, and to work through all the traumas that they experience. But now I do think it is the future and the present of mental health. And also, I think that it's important to acknowledge because the, a lot of the information and news and, you know, research and everything that's coming out is all very positive, which is great. Yeah. But it's not really fully, uh, fully painting the full picture of what's the reality of working with psychedelic medicine. So a lot of the stuff that's coming out now is like, it'll change your life overnight, like it can do all these amazing things, which Yes, it can, but it's not a magic bullet. It's not going to fix your life if you're not willing to put the work in. It's mm -hmm. it can't change you unless you're willing to change yourself. And I and I don't think that that's talked about enough in the media these days. And so I, you know, I meet people and I've had ceremonies with people who expect for the medicine in one journey to completely change everything that's wrong in their lives without them actually putting the work in. Mm -hmm. So it only works if you're willing to do the work and if you're willing to sit with your shit and sit with your shadows and, and work through all that and really confront yourself and, and look yourself in the eye and in the mirror in the most vulnerable way, then it's going to work. And I've, I've seen some really depressed people just completely turn their lives around and it takes time it takes weeks it takes months sometimes it can take you know a year but as long as you're willing to put in the work and really look at the medicine as an ally for you and not something that's going to be a quick fix and also mm -hmm. something that's not a drug that's just going to make you go crazy I even I hate referring to them as drugs because drugs mm -hmm. just 
cover up your problems. Uh, you know, they don't actually get to the root of it. To me, mm-hmm. this is medicine. It actually helps get to the root of what's going on and helps you heal. So I think drugs is like, and it's like a very disrespectful way of describing these medicines that grow from the earth. I don't think there's anything else that grows from the earth that we <laughs> refer to as a drug besides uh, psychedelics. True. Um, but it uh, it's incredibly powerful, but you have to be willing to put the work in. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And it, what's beautiful about it is it can really highlight what's in your way and, you know, what's blocking you and what you need to work on and heal. And it can do a lot of the rewiring for you, but you have to be willing to do it. And you have to be willing to stick with the process because healing is not linear by any means. It's up, down, all around, two steps forward, three steps back, you know, just it's it's a messy process when it comes to healing and and working through your stuff and people that i i work with who have a challenging time they think it's going to be a linear process and they think after a journey all their problems are going to go away and their life is going to be magically cured and like that's just not the case so it's incredibly powerful medicine and it really teaches you how to be your own healer and it teaches you what your values truly are and what your truth is and how to really connect with and honor your body. But you have to be willing there to go there in terms of that connection. You have to be willing to take a look under the hood of your life and, and see what's really going on. But it's incredible, especially, you know, with microdosing and microdosing psilocybin and how that's really able to help people. I've worked with a number of clients who are trying to get off their SSRI antidepressants that they've been on for years and are able to taper off with the assistance of microdosing and then an actual journey itself. And it's just, I have so many great things to say about psychedelics. (laughs) And I also like to look at it from a, a very balanced point of view, knowing that it's, it's not a, it's not a quick fix. It's not a magic silver bullet, but it can really be a big ally for you in your life if you're willing to let it be. Yeah. That's very important to say that you still need to work through your mm-hmm. things that are coming up through mm-hmm. psych- psychedelics. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's very important to say. And mm-hmm. uh, one last thing, um, just to, you know, demystify these things. <laughs> I, I know many people when I mentioned them, uh, mentioned psychedelics to them they were talking about um you know what about if i get addicted uh very worried about addiction and Mm. i know it's not a thing but uh Mm -hmm. yeah if you want to say a couple of things about that too (laughs) for sure yeah psychedelics are non-addictive um especially working with psilocybin microdosing if you stop microdosing and you've been microdosing for months there's no withdrawal symptoms your body doesn't crave it by any means and when it comes to like a full-blown journey you can only do one of those like once maybe every couple of months at the most and it's typically a thing where people are like okay I did that I don't need to do it again exactly (laughs) right like you know and I think get they they lump them into these again these drug categories where we're putting them in the same categories as heroin and meth and also if you want to you know throw drugs into the situation then antidepressants antidepressants are very addictive there's Mm -hmm. terrible withdrawal symptoms from that um and there's definitely drugs that are addictive on well, not unfortunately, I would say fortunately, psychedelics are non addictive. So if that's a fear for people, that's just false programming that they've been fed probably from their government that's trying to scare them and keep them away from exploring their Mm -hmm. own consciousness and exploring their healing in a way that puts the power back into their hands. So yeah, don't don't believe everything that you hear about psychedelics, (laughs) especially when anyone is referring to them as drugs that's usually a pretty big red flag that the person doesn't really know what they're talking about yeah i totally agree with that and i can confirm that after a journey i think you're okay for a couple of years Mm -hmm. (laughs) you don't feel you need to do it again no Um, yeah okay so is there anything else anything else that you want to share do you think is useful Yeah, Yeah, I would say, you know, psychedelics definitely aren't for everyone. There's people, especially people that are suffering from more severe mental illnesses like uh, schizophrenia, borderline, bipolar, psychosis, people that are really, you know, uh, feeling very suicidal. 
also people that have pre-existing heart and lung conditions, you know, definitely think twice and, and get a couple of opinions prior to actually engaging in psychedelics or using psychedelics. And if you are feeling the call to work with them, I would recommend doing it in an intentional way. I'm not a fan of recreational psychedelic use by any means. I think mm-hmm. it's disrespectful to the medicine itself. And if you are trying to do it for the first time, you know, find someone that's a guide, find someone that can really help you through that process and help you properly prepare and be there with you during your actual journey itself to provide mental, emotional, and physical support and hold space for you. And also someone that you can work with in the integration process, because oftentimes there's, you know, big lessons and and teachings that come through in the journey. And then you're figuring out how do I actually incorporate those into my day-to-day life. And so having the proper support system around you is so important if you're thinking of working with psychedelics, because it can sometimes be a bit of a destabilizing experience. So Mm -hmm. making sure that you're in a good enough place mentally, emotionally, and physically, where if there is something challenging that comes up for you during your journey, that you have the resources and energy to then work through it on the back end. And if you're someone who's like in a big transition, like you're moving or you're you know, just broke up with your boyfriend or you're just, you know, in the absolute thick of a really uh, big transitional period in your life, wait, (laughs) pause. It's really best not to rush into these types of situations and experiences and really, really take your time. And I would say only do it if you feel internally like this is something that's really calling to you. And if at any point you're like, oh, I should do this. And like, this is something I have to do pause because as soon as you're forcing yourself to work with this medicine then the energetics of it are off and you really shouldn't be forcing yourself to to do anything and there's always going to be a level of discomfort that comes up in your preparation process and there's Mm -hmm. a big difference between discomfort and and forcing yourself to do something so I would say only engage with them if it feels right for you, if it's on your heart, if you have that calling, and then if you have the proper support system around you to support you before, during, and after the journey is really the best way to maximize your experience and get the most out of your journey and and ceremonial experience with psychedelics. Amazing. Thanks for sharing all this useful information with us. (laughs) Um, so I don't know if there is anything else you want to add in general uh, <laughs> what we talked about otherwise you can share maybe where people can find you what you are offering now and then of course I will put everything in the show notes as well yeah definitely I would say there's one message that's coming through for the collective and and for anyone that's listening especially if there's anyone that's listening that's going through a really challenging dark time period in their life right now is to just know that the challenging dark time is going to end it's not your forever destination and ultimately you're going to come out of it on the other side as a much stronger more attuned version of yourself and that there's so many lessons that are available for you. And I know how hard (laughs) it can be. I've been in a a dark chapter for about a year now and I'm like just itching (laughs) out of it at this point, but it's, it's so worth just going into the fire and, and staying there and not trying to rush through it and, and knowing that there's a lot of lessons and gifts and blessings and abundance for you that's available for you on the other side of it so hang in there it's it's happening for a reason and it's making you a better teacher mentor healer lover you know just any role that you play in your life ultimately it's making you better at that so hang in there it's going to get better the sun will come again and you can absolutely get through whatever you're going through right now and you're going to be so proud of yourself when you come out on the other side of it wow (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much mm-hmm. uh thank this you. is channeling by the way in case you, you don't know. <laughs> yeah that really wants to come through so I, I hope that resonates with someone and then if anyone uh is interested in working together so right now I'm also offering intuitive readings that's where you and I first met was through yeah. an intuitive reading so I'm offering those 
And you can find me on Instagram at XO Julia McCarthy. My profile is private right now. So just send me a friend request and I'll be happy to accept your request. I went through and just accepted like 30 people last night. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I feel bad. These people were waiting here for a little while. We just get so many bots <laughs> that, that request to follow me. Um, and then there's also a link in my Instagram bio to book one of those sessions. And then if someone's interested in working with psychedelics in an intentional way, you can just send me a DM and we can continue the conversation from there. Great. Thank you so much for being here. My and pleasure. thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. And I'll catch you to the next episode, everyone. Yay, Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.